down. Well, in particular, thank you, madam.
felt so gaga on Blue, I went and did me some shopping. Let me see. Oh, Sue, why don't you go on a spree sometime? Me? Yes, you, a husband worth a million who's just crazy for you to spend some of it. And isn't this a pretty frock? Jimmy isn't a millionaire. He's going to be with you as a wife. He just owns a small publishing concern, religious literature and Bibles. But business has been booming. And today, I suppose, Jimmy's worth, well, maybe three quarters of a million. Three quarters of a million out of the Bible? You'll have to read that book someday. <laughs> there are hats and there are hats, but this, my darling, is a chapeau. Doesn't it go beautifully with these step-ins? Oh, Lucille! Oh, Sue? Oh, dear! It's me, Jimmy. Lucille, you kid are you? How's every little thing in the Bible Belt? Oh, it's fine. Dearest, I brought you a box of chocolates. You shouldn't have. Give me a kiss. Now take it back. I don't want it. <laughs> Jimmy, you never seem to grow up, and I hope you never do. Would either of you ladies like a chocolate? They're Louis Sherry. Yum, yum. Sue? A soft center. What's all this? A few little things I charge. Oh, darn. I thought they were yours, Sue. Mine? I'll give you a thousand dollars, two thousand, if you'll only promise to spend it. Oh, would that my Billy had a touch of you about him? Well, I'll only say that you're a dear Jimmy, but I don't see any reason for throwing honey away. Spending it isn't throwing it away. Here, here. Well, then it's not going to be as simple as I led you to believe. 
She must be bought off at once. She must. She and Betty. Betty? Betty. I met her on the Fall River night boat. I was on my way to the Boston Theological Seminary, and this poor child lost her purse. She lost her purse. I paid her fare, and incidentally, I told her I had more money than I knew what to do with. And you know, she seemed really interested. Really? She, she, had, she told me she wanted to study art, but she had a mean sort of father who was forcing her to marry a man three times her age, who was going to foreclose on the... I saw the movie. It was exactly like that. Do you know that poor child was going to jump from the deck into the cruel, icy waters? But thank heaven, that part of her life is over. I opened some charge accounts for her. She's pursuing her art studies and is in a fair way of becoming a great artist. That girl's a great artist right now. I think she is. <laughs> I think so too. But no greater an artist than Winnie. Winnie? Winnie, from Washington. The sad little thing. Did she have a father too? Yes, formerly a rich senator, but they caught him. <laughs> Winnie had ambitions to play the violin if only someone would provide for her. And I suggested I would be glad to help out if she didn't consider it an insult. So she didn't, I hope. No, that's what I liked about Winnie. She has decision. She said yes. Just like that. Exactly. And believe it or not, now she's taking two violin lessons every day. Flora, <laughs> Betty, Winnie. Is there anyone else? No. That's all. That's all. What do you think I am, a millionaire? <laughs> I just wanted to make it possible for three attractive, deserving young ladies to enjoy the good things of life. It was nothing more than that. Do you want to know something frightening? What? I believe you. <laughs> but it does look suspicious. Very. And I was enjoying it so, just spreading sunshine. What is the point in having money and no one to spend it on? You poor shrimp. You said a mouthful. But don't worry. I'm sure I can buy them off. Well, if you can, there's $10,000 in it for you. $10,000? Could you use it? The way my wife spends money? It's a deal. Wow! <laughs> well, I see I'll have to go to Boston, Washington, and the Astor. Lucille, what are you doing cooped up on a beautiful day like this? What? You should be out shopping. What? Uh, by the way, uh, I need to go to Boston this weekend on very important business. Come on, Jimmy, we have things to attend to. I need names and addresses, facts, figures. Something's fishy. Jimmy must have been telling him about the joys of spending. Maybe. But before he comes to his senses, let's get going. I can't. I have things to do. I'll get it. Save your shoe leather. Hello, Uncle Steele. Hello, Mrs. Smith. My favorite nephew and my favorite young man. Ah, uh, I want to show you something. What is it? I can't wait to see. It's a ring. Oh, isn't it beautiful? Don't say anything, but it cost a fortune. It must have. It's so petite. I hope it fits. I never saw an engagement ring that didn't. And you really like it? Oh, it's beautiful. It's lovely. And the nicest thing about it is it's not gaudy. Hello, everybody. I'm home. Hello, Lucille. Hello, Aunt Sue. Hello, Nanette. Hi there. How was cooking class? We baked today. Good. How nice. Nanette, look who's here. Hello, Nanette. Hello, Tom. Aren't they just adorable together? So long, Aunt Lucille. So long, Aunt Sue. Nanette. Tom. There's something I've been meaning to mention for a really long time. Is there? Yes, there is. What is it? Well? Well, what? Oh, I guess now is as good a time as any. I guess it is. Nanette? Tom? I confess to the breeze. I love you. So the birds and the bees your name.
folks passed on, I promise to bring you up a proper young lady and see that you marry a proper young man and make him a nice home. Well, that's exactly it. I'll be going to go from one nice home to another. I want a little time off for good behavior. We're running off to Atlantic City unchaperoned with a bunch of girls who think life is one long giggle. All of them sipping cocktails and puffing cigarettes. But all I want no, to do... No, Minette. Besides, what can you do in Atlantic City that you can't do right here at home? I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'd rather you didn't. I tried. I know you did. Oh well. <coughs> Pauline, I do wish you wouldn't smoke on the job. <laughs> yes, ma'am. It's one of those days. So you won't let you go? No. Well, we can go there on your honeymoon. Then Tom will say, no, no, Nanette. Well, no one says I can't go to Atlantic City. Save time and money. I'll telegraph those girls, have them meet me at Chitty Cottage, and while I'm there, I'll arrange a sublet it. Yes, sir. Hold your horses! I got them. Two births tonight on the train to Boston, and two tomorrow night from Boston straight through to Washington. Good boy. Excellent. Now, go exchange them. Would you parlor car seats to Atlantic City tomorrow morning? Oh, good! Now I can't take Nunet to dinner. Why are we going to Atlantic City? Those women. Oh! They've been bothering Jimmy. No! Yes. Oh, real vamps, I bet. You guessed it. We have to buy them off. With money? I've always found that's the best way. <laughs> we'll get them together, make the deal, and pick up our ten thousand. Ten thousand dollars! Steady. You'll barely pay your Aunt Lucille's charges now. Now get going! Oh, I like this job. It's exciting without being dangerous. <laughs> Is Mr. Smith in? No. I've come all the way from San Francisco. San Francisco? San Francisco? Oh, Mrs. Layton, I presume. Flora, to her friend. Uh, Mr. Smith had the message for you. What is it? Oh, no, not now. These walls have ears. Later. And I leave this message for him. Thank you. You know how love can drive a person mad? I know. I know. All I have to my name is this burning passion. It's all I have. You have more. <laughs> Go back to the Astor and wait for me. Now, may I see you from taxi cab? Poor Lucille. No wonder Billy was being so generous. Jimmy! What is it? That was Flora. On the telephone? In person. She left uh, this for you. <sighs> Mercy me. You must leave town till everything is settled. I must. Do you know anyone in Philadelphia? Not a soul. Good. Check into the YMCA. If you get bored, open a Bible stand in the lobby. Now, to get a hold of Betty and Louie. Be gentle! All I'm gonna do is telegraph. The spirit of two natures, vibrating as one. When shall I see you? Oh! 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 Lynette! <laughs> Don't do that. I'm a very easy flusterer. I love you very much, Uncle Jimmy. And your Aunt Sue and I love you very much. And if there's any little thing your dear little heart desires... Yes, there is. As a matter of fact, there are 67 of them. Can I hear just a few? They're all grown-up things.